It's Monday, February 16th, and you're listening to the Three Nerds in a Basement podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Blavin. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the world. Man, it's Valentine's Day. I'm not even going to hide it to you guys. We're recording on Valentine's Day. We are. We're, we're spending and time we, with we, the ones we love. And we are surrounded by women's. <laughs> we're not. We're surrounded by friendship. And that's really all we need. Well, no, Valentine's we're surrounded Day. by love. Yeah, love. You on know? Valentine's night. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what time is it? 9.30. Do you yeah. think if I had a date, I would ditch? Yep. Uh, probably. <sighs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think if any one of us had a date, we'd ditch. No, I don't... It depends how far in advance we have planned this. Like, if last week we were like, we're doing this on a Saturday, mm. then it's like, sure, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. But if it was like, hey, can we record Saturday on a Thursday? And I'm like, nah, son. Yeah, I mean... What, what does that even mean? Yeah. The more... The more Notice oh, I, I see had. what you're saying. The more notice I had would be less likely to cancel or okay. bail. Okay. Makes sense. I would have ditched. Anyways, <laughs> of course, dear listener, you are not listening to this on Valentine's Day. You're listening to this on Family Day. Same thing. So, happy Family Day for your holidays. I hope it's been wonderful. And if you had a good Valentine's evening, I hope it was prosperous. Is there a stat holiday in the States, too? Because, like, isn't Family Day, like, an Ontario thing? I can't remember. Whatever. Maybe. No, I don't think they have one. It's I think it's a is Canadian a, thing, is right? It Memorial Day? Maybe. Veterans Day? I don't know. I don't, I'm not familiar with the president, or the holidays. You're not anymore. familiar with the president? Neither am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar with the, the, the holidays. Yeah, I was thinking President's Day or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I heard he's black. No. Oh That's God. crazy. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you guys got a lot of loving on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sparks flu, mistakes Sparks happened. Sparks flu, mistakes yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. I hope you got all the chocolates you wanted. Yeah, the, obviously the next day is the best because it's all on sale tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Make your trip down to Laura Secord. Yeah. That's Canadian only too. What the heck with all these Canadian specific references? Uh, it's because we're Canadian. True. True. Okay. Beyond that, this is going to be a, a bit of a truncated show for other reasons that you will get to. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know what? Let's just talk about it. I mean, we don't. We haven't done a review in a while. Should we talk about? Should just bring up the elephant in the room. Let's do it. <laughs> let's let's. And then hunt the, it. The Tigrex in the room. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So, Monster Hunter Four Ultimate came out. Yay. It's out. It is out. Much to a lot of fanfare, and I think for the next couple of days, the boys are all getting together to play nonstop. And it's mm-hmm. it's going to be crazy. So there's been a few changes now. Capcom has decided to explore the vertical side of Monster Hunter. <laughs> Jumping and going up, you know? Is it the and, Y-axis? Yeah, the, the Y-axis. Axis. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a lot of monsters, they jump from play, uh, lower level to upper level, upper level to lower level. You can fight stuff like spiders, monkeys, and, um, yeah, there's also two new weapons. A weapon that has a bow staff with an insect attached to it. And Vince's favorite, which is the charge blade, so where it's a sword you where you can recharge... This the sword and put get <clears throat> files and put it into your shield and change it into an axe mode, mm-hmm. which is very Vince. Mm. So yeah, and uh, you know with the advent of the new 3DS as well, you know they Vince and I got one, so we enjoy pros- you know faster processing times and also uh, an extra C stick for you know camera control. I'm still holding people back with yeah. my my slower load times. Exactly. It's because of you that we have to wait <laughs> for those load times. Those extra 0. 0.7 seconds. Oh, yeah. I you could be it. hunting. I hate it. But <laughs> the load times are crazy. The game looks gorgeous and yeah, let's get into wait, it. Wait, like crazy long or crazy fast? What? Cuz I think the load times are pretty fast. No, they're super fast. That's yeah, what I mean. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of insane. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Let's get into it. Anthony, what do you think? Yo, bow staff is cool. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. you mean insect glaive. Yeah, my insect glaive and my bro, my kinsect. They're pretty. Do- they're pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I don't know. Monster Hunter has this formula. Like even since, even when they brought out two, where it's like they never change too much to be crazy, mm. but they always throw in like a new a new thing to make it interesting. Yeah. Be that new monsters or a couple new weapons. Whereas this one, it's probably the most change from previous entries yeah. i feel like it's a lot more beginner friendly 
uh, in terms of the way they like spell out every single tutorial for each weapon. Uh, even the the opening quests are, I feel more handholdy than even try or two, uh, in terms of their opening quests. Uh, and overall, so far, I'm finding the game a lot easier. Obviously, I'm only like hunter rank one. I haven't even completed my first urgent quest to get to the next set of quests in single player. Yeah, neither did we. Yeah. No, but but hold on, but Anthony, you're you've only done single player, right? I've only done single player. And, like, I'm at that urgent quest, but they've added a, some, like, really cool, interesting things. Like, um, so they have expedition mode. Yeah. So, uh, first off, your town, uh, you're not uh, relegated to one town anymore. There's multiple towns across the world map, and they all serve a different purpose. One's kind of like a hub town, one's for high rank quests and stuff like that. Uh, but they have another thing called expeditions, where you can go into the kind of these, like, really corridor maps. Uh, and fight a random monster. You don't know what the monster is going to be mm. when you go to fight them, so you can't really plan out your gear, but you get different rewards based on your performance if you kill them, uh, or if you only like drop like a shiny item, which is like like a wavered tier or something yeah. like that. Uh, and, and that's really interesting because it, it kind of adds this like random element and greater risk, greater reward yeah. type of deal, like a big gamble in the Monster Hunter series. Uh, I haven't tried the charge blade, charge axe, yet. Uh, that's it looks pretty cool at least. Uh, but I do really like the the bow staff because because of the new verticality and the focus on uh, mounting monsters now. Because uh, you can get on the back of bigger monsters, uh, you can break certain parts on their back. Yeah, uh, and get special rewards for that. Uh, it allowed like this weapon. It's very it's very hard to get used to. But I feel once you once you understand its move set yeah. and you understand how to use the your kin sect properly, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to do some like devastating stuff. Yeah. As well as the ability just to prop yourself in the air at any time you want. You don't need a ledge to do an air attack with this weapon. You can just plant your weapon into the ground and like kinda pole vault up in the air. And that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Uh so far the hardest thing for me is actually using the kin sect. <laughs> Cause how it works is that it has uh you have a bug and you shoot it at the monster. Depending on where it hits it on the monster, it has a, it brings back a different upgrade. Uh, red is attack. Orange, I believe, is defense. Okay. There's white, which does something. I don't remember. And then there's green, which gives you back health. Uh, white is speed. Speed. Oh. Yeah. So you can get three of these, like, or a combination of the three. Uh, and then you get an overall power bonus based on what you get. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you, but you can't just keep hitting the same place like, three times in a row. I can't just hit you in the tail three times and get three reds. Oh. Like, you have to hit in different areas. Uh, so I'm sure there's going to be, like, charts later on. Or maybe there's charts even now. Just there of, is. like, like where to hit them on the monster to get certain upgrades and stuff. That's always different for every monster? Yeah, it should oh. be. Or at least it should be to my... Yeah. Do you know about the homing? Uh, yeah, so you can shoot out almost like a nectar bomb, pretty much, and it marks a certain part. Yeah. Uh, and then when you shoot out your kinsect, instead of going through a straight line, it'll go towards the nectar. Yeah. So it's a little bit uh, easier, but you do have to spend your time actually shooting and <clears throat> targeting. So, it's... so I, I saw some people upgrade the kinsect glaive to the highest, but all they did was put the because you have to feed the kinsect nectar, and uh, it goes power defend their power stamina. How many times do you use in speed? Uh -huh. They put it all in speed. When they shoot the kinsect, it's like firing a bullet. He's going, oh. Pshoo! And all they do is just pinpoint where they want to get, get the buff, and then start beating face. That's it's pretty sick. cool. It's so sick. Whoa. Yeah, it's nuts. Oh, yeah, but, like, I don't know. This is These are kind of games where I put in hun literally hundreds of hours into uh, in everything except for one, because I don't think I've ever played one. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, like, it's... It hasn't changed enough for it to be dramatic to where it could change my opinion on the game, but it's different enough where I do want to put in that extra hundred hours or yeah. so. So like, it's really great, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's weird talking about it because like I'm such a big fan of it already. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I really like it. Cool. I uh, I mostly agree with what you have to say. I think for me, what I do like is that. Uh, because the past two Monster Hunters we all played were three, or try, and then three ultimate. Yeah. Four just feels new. Okay. Yeah, there's so many new monsters. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing for me. Like, Even the little monsters. Yeah, like and it's not just content, it's small gameplay changes. Just like running, 
being slightly more mobile. Jumping off cliffs and climbing things is like very fluid. Yeah. Jumping while you're climbing. Yeah. Yeah, things like that. that climbing we... while you're jumping. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just mounting. Yeah, it's all fun. Uh, we've ta we've already mentioned the charge blade. Yeah, it's great. I can confirm. It's awesome. Um, the it is very. This is probably the easiest monster to get into with all the tutorials and all the help. Uh, dialogue and whatnot. I still don't think it's a game you want to jump into it like with cold feet. I, mm -hmm. I do think you still need someone to maybe guide you through because there's just a lot of small things that most people won't know about, yeah. like crafting potions. Exactly. Like what when you walk in and you're on your your three med kits, it's like, well, now what? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of small little hints that'll be very very beneficial to to beginners, but. Regardless, I think the game is great. I uh, I think I looked at my game clock, and I the game came out, what, yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, so I already have ten hours in mine. I have seven. Man, what have you guys been doing with your life? After you guys left last night... No, I, you didn't. Yeah, I was going to go to bed, no. and I was like, I should hunt this one thing. <laughs> and then it's 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 the same thing, right? Like, one hunt turns into ten. I'm only one ore off from yeah. upgrading my deal. Yeah. Uh, when, Going. Yeah, when we, <laughs> when we first played last night, it brought up a lot of... Uh, uh, memorable quotes, you know, fuck Renoplos. Uh, yeah, fuck Renoplos. <laughs> Everything's weak to slime. Yeah. Uh, Even slime. <laughs> uh, so, it's good. But no, it's uh, great. Yeah. I I do like the new camera that they added. I like how it's not locked. Especially for the new 3DS. Yeah. yeah, but even still, I like how it's just like a free-moving camera yeah, now. Yeah. But, uh, no, I really enjoy it. It, it The single-player is easy, but... I think me and Blaven we started doing the online like right at the beginning, like right away, yeah. Yeah, and it was a it was a decent challenge. That's where the most fun is. Yeah, and then we got rocked. <laughs> we got rocked by the urgent. Yeah. yeah. So, hopefully, we'll get through that hump today. Yeah, hopefully. Just make some armor sets, probably. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I like it. Uh, Blaven. The the beginning is always the most boring. Yes. It's because we have to do all the hunt, the gathering quests. Like we already know how to do all this, mm -hmm. and now uh, we. I mean, this is all meant to like. You know, have the get hunter gatherer type stuff, but I mean, I mean, all we're interested in is fighting the big stuff, right? Yeah, I think once we move from low rank to high rank, things it's will fine. Start yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to pick up, and I mean, this is always where it is. But the game hasn't even hit its stride, and we're having so much fun. So yeah. I mean, there's just I mean, new maps, new everything. Like it's gonna be fun to see it all. Yeah, I do like all the new environments. I like how they took out swimming. Oh yeah, yeah. no more leggy acres. Womp womp. Boo! That man swimming sucked anyways. I didn't like swimming. Uh, they replaced it. With uh, climbing. Climbing. <laughs> climbing and just giving you monsters who essentially could move as if they were in the water. Yeah. 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 Actually, they have a lot of serpentine-like monsters now. Yeah, like the the one monkey creature, too. Yeah. He, just, on he just moves. Yeah. Like, we haven't seen them yet, but there's yeah. a lot of snakes. Yeah. And we've never had snake, like, like yeah. traditional like Chinese dragon-looking type stuff before, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of that stuff. So. I even, like, in the beginning, like how you mentioned, is very, like, hunter-gatherer. Like, you got to get through the boring stuff. But I like how they mention it in the text Yeah, it's like, yeah, we don't, we're not going to shy away from tradition. Yeah. you got to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I read up that the localization is actually done by the 8-4 play guys. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so that's why it's very self-aware. Yeah. It's very self-aware, and, it, and it's uh, it's good. It's the same way, uh, what do you call it? Fire Emblem Wicking has the same style of uh, localization. Mark McDonald ever wants to come on our podcast. Yeah, because it, it was very different compared to the last Monster, Monster Hunter, where mm -hmm. it was very stiff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, I, for example, I really like the guild lady. Yeah, right? Yeah. There's a lot more character to the characters. Yeah. And even this, the way they name, like, uh, you got in the online hall, mm -hmm. like, the arena guild lady is called the arena bambina. Yeah. And just, like, it, there's, like, little things like that that really make the kind of localization go over the top. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Suck you in. Uh, and speaking of that, I like how they just set up the general world. Mm. Like, it's pretty easy to go, go from online to offline. Oh, yeah, online hubs on your 3DS now. Yeah. You don't have to have the Wii version. Not that there is a Wii version. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. yeah, it's just overall a sweet game. Like, it's it's great. Give it a shot. I think it's the best entry so far. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, we, the third one was good, but the swimming made it suck. But this is, like, just way better. Yeah. Yeah. If you can find, like, and, like, if you or a couple friends, like, wanted to try this, like, this is the one to kind of dive into Monster Hunter, I feel. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I actually, um, on the day I, I bought mine, I, uh, I woke up early and I went to the store to get it because mm -hmm. I was going to go home and system transfer and then go to class. But the transfer took faster than I thought. I went to class and I already street passed some people. And a lot of them are already pretty far. 
Oh, wow. For first day and stuff. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, we're, we're slacking. Yeah. But I do have to say, yeah, if um, the game is exponentially better if you can find a group to play with. Oh, I mean, this that's the thing, right? I mean, yeah. the, the fact that we all... This just so happens that there's four of us. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we had a fifth friend or, you know... Yeah. It's not going to work, man. So we're going to get in the group. <laughs> this, like, this square only has four sides. Yeah, I said, yeah, so, like, it's not a rhombus, you know? It's not a rhomboid. So, yeah. I also, Pentagon. I've also been wondering, like, uh, so, like, there's been the Chinese-made Monster Hunter Frontier. Yes. That's been on Xbox 360 and the PC for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how many ideas, like, the guys have taken from that. Because uh, in their maps, they also have a lot of verticality. Like, oh, even yeah. by the time 3 came out, yeah. they had, like, areas where there's water geysers. Yeah. And you can use those water geysers to blast you up into other Ooh, areas. Wow. Uh, and I think I mentioned it on the podcast before, but there are uh, these weapons called tonfas. But they're, like, gun tonfas. So you can use them, and I've seen people do combos where they're just perpetually in the air. Cool. And they're just, like, jetting across the arena and, like, doing some high mo- highly mobile stuff. Uh, and even with snakes, so snakes are new to four, yeah. but in Frontier, they have they have a lot of snakes. One of their legendary creatures, uh, the monster is the arena. Uh-huh. So you're trapped in a circle around this giant, giant snake, yeah. and you have to airdrop in. So, mm-hmm. Like, I wonder how many... Like, how that influenced this game, I guess. No, no. It seems like it has. Yeah. No, no, this game is, like, can't say enough good things about it. It's so good. Yeah, but I mean, at its core, it still is Monster Hunter, and if it's never been your thing, then, well, yeah. it's never been your thing. And, like, if you're only, if you're only like, casually playing 3DS yeah. games, like, I don't feel you'll get a lot out of this. Yeah. This, this is an investment. Yeah. It's not, like, a pick-up-and-play type thing. Because, like, like I said, I'd, on 3, on my 3DS clock, I have 200, like, 200-plus 200 hours, mm-hmm. and I only just got, like, one of the highest ranking monster uh-huh. armors yeah right so you really have to invest time in this to yeah. get it's almost like an mmo i guess in that way yeah the um, i was reading uh, an article today about how... whoa, 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 whoa you don't read did someone read it to you no okay. uh, i read an article headline today a headline <laughs> okay <laughs> busted there we go um destiny players are finally hitting their wall oh nice and um uh, I, I read an article saying that maybe you should try out Monster Hunter, and I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? Mm-hmm. If you like grinding weapons, yes, yeah. but I don't think that that comparison is as straightforward as it may seem. If you like grinding weapons where it's actually fun to do so, then do it. But it, I'm saying, like, <laughs> if you like space, if you like guns, this ain't for you, bro. Is this this ain't for you? There's bow guns. <laughs> no, it's got guns in the title. If you like first person shooting. Oh, no. you can go first person. No, man. You just can't move when you no. do it. <laughs> but no. But yeah. But but very much just like Destiny, your experience with Monster Hunter will be dictated heavily by the community you play with. Also the fact that this game has content. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Yes, yes. Yeah. Tons of content. <gasps> I can't wait till we have our downloadable event quests and challenge quests. And that's, that's the thing with times. this one as well. Uh, with Try, they brought out American exclusive events, whereas the Tri in Japan got cool things like the Tetsaiga from Inuyasha yeah. and like a bunch of other cool stuff, where now Capcom's heard that like Amer- North Americans want that stuff too. Yeah. So they're going to bring out like Mega Man costumes for your cats, uh, a whole Zelda tunic and yeah. the Master Sword, Samus Aran armor and stuff, Yeah. which apparently I learned you can only get the power suit armor, like the full a regular or original yeah. Metroid thing, if you're a guy. Yeah, the girl gets yeah, zero. Yeah, gets this, like, there's no option, like, you only get zero suit, and I was like, ah. Eh. Oh, well, that makes, to me, I guess that makes sense, just because, I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, because, like, Samus is a girl, so it's not like, oh, the dude I, I, I think it's because they didn't want to make two different armor sets. Yeah, probably. Right. But, I'm okay. I, I prefer the zero suit anyway, and I'm a girl. Oh, yeah, Same. I play this game as a girl. Same. So, Same. Uh, and me and TJ are the guys. Yeah. So, so we, we have a balanced out crew. <laughs> Dating. Yeah. I, I like to think that my so like my character is the same name. I like to think that like at the end of three, she got hit by a monster and got amnesia and forgot all her hunting skills. You guys are awful. Wow. Yeah. And she's like going. You have this whole yeah, so deep. And she's like going through four, and she's like relearning her her latent abilities to be a badass. I just think my character is very much like Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, there's like a bunch of different. Red-headed <laughs> monster hunters. And she gets reborn, okay. and then she travels to a different 
timeline or game world, and then she's in that one. Is she a monster lord? Yeah, she's a monster lord in this one. In okay. Final Fantasy, she's an elf person. So. <laughs> she crosses over genres. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you guys want to say on Monster Hunter? No, like we basically can't say enough good things about it. Okay. Yo, if you guys on who listen to the podcast want to play. Yeah, you know, we'll post up our friend codes on yeah. our Facebook um, thing. Yeah, shoot out, shoot out your friend codes to us. Well, totally. yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll try and remember to put our friend codes everywhere we post this podcast. Uh, okay, there you go. For picks of the week, well, I'm going to kick this, off, this one it. off. Do it. Because true believers, guess what? Aliens do exist. No, Spidey's coming home. Oh, whatever. So you guys heard the news. Uh, Marvel and Sony came to an agreement. Spider-Man will indeed show up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But it's not Andrew Garfield. No, it is not Andrew Garfield. Boo. And that's all the details we know. It's Idris Elba. There's, well, speaking <laughs> of, of just black people in general, there's been a huge outpouring from the hardcore fans that they want to get... What's his face from Community? Donald Glover. Donald yeah. Glover. That happened a while ago too, when they first announced. As Miles Morales, and as much as I'm in for support for cultural diversity and his dream to be Spider-Man, I kind of just want Peter Parker. <laughs> and it's not like racist. This, no, it's nothing like that. It's just um, this is Spider-Man's first appearance in the in the universe. Yeah. Don't you kind of just want it to be Peter Parker? I kind of just want that snark. Like, I don't know. I, I honestly, I know nothing about Miles Morales, so yeah. maybe he also carries it. Yeah. But, like, I kind of want that smart alecky, sarcastic Spider Man, like, to go along with that crew. Oh, the Peter Parker? Yeah. Yeah. What I enjoy about the fact that they announced this was all the jokes. It's like, oh, wow. I hope. I hope we, we get to see his origin story again because we don't know it already. <laughs> it's like. I, so I think that's. that's they're like they're not gonna do the origin story. I think it's hilarious that they always that people are like, yeah, oh, one more time, eh? <laughs> I think those yeah, I think those witty comments are kind of very inspired. They're very thematic with Spider Man anyway. Yeah, that's what Spider Man would say. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But uh, so he, there's a couple things behind this deal. First of all, Marvel does not own the rights to Spider Man. That's not what's happening. So here. Fox still owns it. Sony. Still oh, Sony owns it. Owns it. And it's not the Marvel. It's not the entire gamut of the Marvel Studios who are producing. Spider-Man films. It's still Sony. The only difference now is the top of a couple of the big dudes from Marvel, uh, Kevin Feige, if he, that name sounds familiar. Sure. He's in charge of all the movies for right, Marvel. Right. He's going to w- work as creative lead with in Sony's studios. Oh, okay. So he's bringing him and a couple big Marvel dudes to do the work, but it's being funded and produced entirely by Sony. Okay. So that's kind of a bit iffy. Is he collecting two paychecks now? Like one for Marvel, mm. one for Sony? Well, yeah, like, well, it's part of the deal. Like, he's getting paid regardless, but... But yeah. is he getting paid from both ends? Like, is he getting paid from Sony and from Well, for Marvel? the Spider-Man stuff, I'm assuming he's getting paid from Sony. That's how it's just going to oh, okay. work. And on all, his per- all his work on the other Marvel stuff is yeah. his studio. Marvel. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, they, they haven't really announced anything so far. They're probably going to scrap everything from Amazing 2 and... Before that, that was a man. Amazing Two had some. She died. They actually killed her in that movie. Amazing Two had some high highs and some extremely low lows. It wasn't a musical, so at least that was okay. That's true. But uh, yeah, so I'm happy to hear that Spider Man's going to be going to the Marvel thing. I can't wait till he appears in the Avengers. <laughs> well, he's going to appear in Civil War. Yes. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, and the other things they've done is they've pushed back the movies Thor and another one, the Panther one. Black Panther. Yeah, I think they both they've pushed both those movies back to make room for a Spider Man movie. So there, there you go. Uh, Anthony, you have a pick of the week. Uh, yeah. So I'll. <clears throat> uh, do you want like, do you want like a thought pro- like a depressing one, or do you want a happy one? Well, Spider-Man's pretty happy, so hit me with the bad news. Okay, so I was reading the New York Times. Oh, <laughs> okay, Mr. <laughs> Wall Street. Tell me all about it. So there is this, uh, it, it appeared on my Facebook, there's a really interesting article. It was about how uh, how a t- one stupid tweet can uh, ruin this girl's life. Uh, her name is 
what is it, Justine Sacco. Mm. So she was a PR rep for some company, I forget. That's not really the important part. So she was on a, a trip to Africa uh, to do some PR. As you do. And she was, like, making a bunch of tweets about going, uh, like, some, like, there was one who was, uh, where is it? Chili, cucumber sandwiches, bad teeth, I'm back in London, and just, like, kind of tweeting her travels. And so she when, before she went to Africa, she tweeted, going to Africa, I hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Okay. Oh, no. And so that's pretty racist, and she probably, like, the article says she, like, chuckled to herself, just posted without thinking. And so during the flight, uh, this became a big, huge thing. Like, it just blew up on Twitter, uh, people yelling at her for being racist. There was, like, a hashtag fire Jennifer Sacco and all this stuff. And uh, during the flight, people knew it was 11 hours, Mm -hmm. so they were following the whole story as she lands and like trying to like people went to the airport where she landed like took pictures of her to show people that she landed Mm -hmm. and like all it became this big internet thing and so uh needless to say she got uh her her big private company came out and said they're gonna fire her and she got fired she lost her job uh, and a bunch of stuff but the article goes on to talk about how almost disproportionate the retribution was for a racist tweet Mm-hmm. Uh, and they interviewed her after the fact, after this happened, where uh, she, she really just, it's like a really, it's like a lapse of judgment. Yeah. So she posts it and she gets ridiculed for weeks, months from just millions of people because the internet is a large place and how it really affected her beyond mm-hmm. the, beyond the whole job, like job loss. Like it gave her mild post-traumatic stress disorder yeah, uh, she lost like a whole crap ton of weight just due due to stress and like she didn't want to be outside, uh, do any social media and stuff like that. Uh, and then it goes. The article just goes on to talk about how, uh, while certain things are offensive and these people do recklessly use the internet in a in a way they didn't expect it to backlash on them. Yeah, like they're <clears> still <throat> like they're still people, mm-hmm. and it, it's hard to get that from being behind a computer screen. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was just like a really interesting kind of thought-provoking article yeah uh, so what i want to know uh her twitter account was it a company associated twitter account no so this was her own personal twitter account but on her personal does it say like her occupation uh, i don't her, her twitter account is long gone by now yeah so by the time that happened they closed the account okay. and uh i i don't re- i honestly don't remember if they mentioned it within the yeah. article if it was associated but they knew somehow maybe through previous tweets or that She's like, I'm going on. Okay. Because um, no, because it just it just seems weird to me that a PR spokesperson, like someone whose whole job is public relations, to know this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because she must know that she's public at some point, even if she has a personal account. It's still her responsibility. It, it, yeah, it's, it is still her responsibility, and that's that's totally right. Yeah. Uh, but like, just that, like, I don't know, like, but it's just, it's just really. I don't know. I just found it very interesting to talk about. Yeah, I mean, people like people don't not understanding what the internet can do, and like you're you're not really in your own bubble. You're in a world bubble, yeah. right? And so what you say does have repercussions, but mm-hmm. sometimes those repercussions might not be proportionate to what you said or did. Yeah, I mean, it's it, this isn't a new idea. I mean, I remember fresh heard about this with the Star Wars kid. Yeah, right. And uh, didn't he like kill himself? Suicidal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that was the. At least that's what I remember last reading, which is very sad, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's just other stories about even people who who, who have things taken out of context. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one girl, or there's one guy, actually, they, they were at a, a tech conference, mm-hmm. and so you know, like, you know what dongles are in computers? just like, little USB attachments, like, you call them dongles. I hate that word, yeah. Yeah, so he made, like, a joke about, like, oh, you're having a big dongle, right? It's just, oh. like, a really dumb joke to his friend. He didn't even, he whispered it to his friend. <clears throat> And there was a girl in front of him who heard it, or she only heard ha- part of it, I guess. She stood up, turned around, took a picture. He thought he was take- she was taking like a crowd picture. Yeah. But she was taking a picture of him, and she posted it to her 9,000 like, feminist area followers being like, hearing jokes about dongles in a male-dominated industry. And he got fired from his job. He got tons of internet backlash mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it also happened to another girl with where they had a... A thing with her friend where they would disobey signs just on purpose for comedy reasons. Mm-hmm. And she disobeyed a cemetery sign uh, mm-hmm. where it was like, be quiet and respect whatever. And she was like giving it the middle finger and pretending to yell. And then she got fired. And it's just 
without context of things like the internet can actually like ruin people's lives for no reason Mm -hmm. while on the other hand that jennifer sacco tweet was actually racist and Mm -hmm. kind of terrible Mm. so it was just it was just really interesting to me cool uh and then the happy news is like you guys like final fantasy dissidia not really oh okay never mind well then it's moot news (laughs) uh so i guess square enix saw that pokemon was coming out with an arcade fighter and they're like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Like, Pokken? Yeah. Pokken tournament? Yeah. And they're like, wait a minute. We already had a series like this. It's called Dissidia. Yeah. So, Square is making an arcade, so far arcade exclusive uh, of Dissidia with a really pretty high-res graphics. They show uh, in, in a, like, a mini trailer or, like, I guess a tech demo, maybe. Yeah. Show a couple characters like Terra, uh, the Warrior of Light, Cloud, clashing against each other. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the Dragon Ball Z fighting games behind the back. Yeah. Uh, it has all the Dissidia, like, dashing and magic attacks and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It looks really cool. There's no word on if it's arcade exclusive or if it's ever coming to consoles at all. But it was just, like, a really cool trailer. Kind of in the same vein as when you first saw the the Pokken tournament stuff. Mm-hmm. When you saw Machamp just punching dudes. So, yeah. Cool. And those are my two picks. Cool. Blavin, do you have any pick? Uh, I have a pick. Uh... It was actually a really interesting thing that Anthony reposted. It was a guy took the time to go through all the Waldo books and oh, give this. us the optimal path to try to find Waldo. Oh, yeah, the computer, I yeah. don't know why I found this so fun, but I did it. I went to some Waldo pictures and, like, tried to look for him, and it works. As yeah. long as you focus on those areas. I oh, Okay, they're not going to lie. I always try to check the edges first. But as he found out, he's actually least... Likely to be in the edges. Yeah, yeah. The corner, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I thought it was really awesome. You should you guys check it out. And it'll just revive an old childhood thing, you know? I like how but, uh, they even did the dot map of like, here's your optimal eye route yeah. to go through this maze. So, and reading those comments of the, that article was pretty funny too because some people are like, man, can't find... It's like, we can find Waldo, but I mean, guess who else is still missing? Who? Carmen San Diego. <laughs> 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 and then, like, apparently somebody saw at a convention that there was a Waldo and a Carmen San Diego holding hands. Oh. <laughs> How awesome oh, is that, That's pretty right? good. Yeah, right? That's a good cosplay. Yeah, that's a good yeah. cosplay couple, right? Yeah, so... I'm gonna steal I don't know. I thought that. that <laughs> You're gonna steal really. that? I'm gonna steal that. But I love how, like, the picture that they had was, like, Waldo waving, and it's like, found you, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was, it, was, it was in Kotaku, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like, found you, you bastard. Yeah, because I was like, what is this about? Like, wh- like what happened to Waldo? Well, what did he do? <laughs> yeah, and then I clicked on it. I'm like, oh, that's what it's about. So, yeah, it's pretty sick. So, And then, you know, whenever you read those Waldo books, it, there's a lot of stuff going on in those pictures. Eh? Yeah, there's a lot of questionable actions going yeah, on right? there. Yeah. Yeah, nice. so, like, at my work, we have a lot of Waldo books. So, like, some of the younger kids who can't, like really read the more yeah. adult books, they, they do the Waldo books. Yeah. And yeah. there's, like, stuff of, like, gladiators, like... Like, dudes get cut in half. Yeah. Like, getting choked out, like, where their necks are just, like, thin noodles. And, like, yeah, oh. it's, yeah. So, yeah, there's some... Somebody some had to draw that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. Also, he's not called Waldo in all parts of the world. No? Like, I think in, in France, is it's Charlie. Like, where's Charlie? Wow. Yeah. Where's yeah. Charlie? Cool. Sweet. Uh, before we close out this section, I just want to say, Toy Fair is happening as we speak. Yo, are we sponsored by Toy Fair? No, but I'm just saying, there's so many cool things. <laughs> there is. For only $9.99 a ticket, you can go to Toy Fair. I wish I could go to Toy Fair. <laughs> Vince could not keep up. I could not keep up with all the news, but I did see one thing that I want to buy. What? Hasbro's doing a, uh, a gift set for all the for an updated version of the Constructicons. Oh, okay. I don't know what those are. The they, combiner. They're, they're six... Construction-based vehicles okay. that combine to form Devastator. The green and the green and purple. The, yeah, one, the green right? and purple. Oh, okay. Combining okay. Robot. Like the dump truck. Yeah, or, yeah. The mi- the mixer, mixmaster. Yeah. Scrapper. How big will the combination be? Do you know? Well, it's advertised to be the biggest combiner we've ever made. <gasps> and the last time they made a biggest transform we ever made was about a foot, and a, no, like two feet tall. Oh wow! I don't think this one's gonna be as big, so I'm gonna go with like a foot and a half. You reckon they'll have the biggest? I don't know. They showed off. They, I mean, they've they have Superion, they have Menasaur, they have the Protectobots. This this is the good guys have a combiner. Yeah, I heard theirs is awful. Superion. Right? Yeah, I heard theirs is awful. And they also have the Protectobots, oh. uh, who are the rescue vehicles. Oh, okay. And they also have Computron, 
These guys sound awful compared yeah, to... Yeah, the, the Autobot combiners suck. Yeah, it seems like the way to go is the... The Decepticons yeah, are the best. Yeah. They have... They Predaking. have King. They have Predaking. King. Yeah. They have uh, Devastator. They have Menasaur, which is basically all the sports cars. Yeah. And they have... Wait, is he a dinosaur? No, Menasaur? No. Why, why is it called Menasaur? I don't like, know. Like S-A-U-R? They... No, no. Oh, S-O-R. Okay. Oh, Menasaur. And they also have the Combaticons, who are all army vehicles. Yeah. Who just combine. Combaticons! Oh, is that what like cool the helicopter name. for yeah. hand? Yeah, he has the helicopter for one hand, he has the tank with two guns. Does Ooh. he fly by holding his hand? No. No, uh-huh. no, no. He, but he, like, when he shows football shoulder attackers you, the rotors spin. Oh, so it just grinds you? Yeah. Man, that's cool. Yeah. And his backpack is, uh, is the tank, so he has two cannons that come forward. And... Well, to be fair, their leader turns into a gun, yeah. so you kind of got to compete with that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's so true. Uh, I have a question for you. There have... So I've been going to chapters, and there have been, like, these Transformers, like, those all-in-one comic, like, their collections, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Are those the ones that you've been reading that are really good, or are those different? There's so many, though. No, no, you're looking at, like, the big black. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 those aren't what I'm reading. Those okay. are sick, though. Those are, like, um... They're, like, literally from the beginning. Oh. Yeah, it's IDW, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. The ones is it, reading, is it IDW, that one? The coll- the, those are the black one? Yeah. Is that like the new art stuff or no? No, it's, well... The, it's the old, like, 19... I, th- I believe IDW got the rights to everything, so they re-released the old Marvel stuff. Oh, okay, that's what, I, th- yeah. that's what I'm thinking right. of. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. The old Marvel stuff's crazy. Yeah. A lot of people swear by that over the cartoon. Yeah, like, they have some really cool stories. Like, yeah. I didn't know, like, that... The, guy, the cassette guy for the... Blaster? Yeah, like, he was, like, a big part of like you know leading like yeah. basically like st- sticking up for the people back in Cybertron and stuff like it's like all that kind of stuff oh, yeah. yeah if I wanted to get into Transformers would that be a place to start from or is there like a newer place to where I could still get all the information well what do you want to know basically I want to know like I want to know the basics of Transformers um, and then like I don't want to like I don't want to start at like I don't know the equivalent of like Infinite Crisis or something like I just want to know like I guess the roots you don't know the roots? Yeah. I'll tell you right now, there are no... There are no roots? Like, basically, Optimus is good. Okay. Megatron is bad. They all have friends who follow them, and they go on for civil war all their life. So I guess it doesn't matter where I start, or as Te- long as you start from the beginning like of that, a series? It doesn't... Every Transformers series, it's always the same. Oh, uh, okay. It's, right. it's always, here's the good guys, here's the bad guys, here are the toys we have to sell. Okay. And this what, is what do? You're totally right, because even the shattered glass one... Yeah. It's just they switch the sides. Yeah. It's the same thing, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's always the same. I mean... Uh, but did you want to know, like, what Optimus Prime was like before he was Optimus Yeah, don't Prime? get me wrong. Like, personalities and actual characters are different, but... Yeah. I mean... But, like, the overall story, like, kind of every every major storyline or story arc is the same, I guess? Pretty much. It's like, like there's, ma- there's some bad. deviations in the middle, <laughs> but they all have the same resolution. Is there ever, like, an instance where they're not fighting robots? Like, robot-on-robot violence? Like with he not other... with like aliens, not really. Okay. Like there, there are some instances where they go to like a different planets and stuff. But okay. most of the time, it's robots on robots. Okay, um, robots. Can't we stop this robot? That's why. I, that's why I like the current version, the current comic of Transformers so much because it's not about that. Oh, okay. Right. Maybe I should read that. Then. Yeah, just go read more than meets the eye. Okay. Yeah, just read the ones where they all have crossovers. <laughs> where it's like Transformers and X Files, Transformers uh, and GI Joe, Ninja Turtles. What's that Japanese one that you yeah. wanted to get? Oh, uh, judged you for it. Uh, kiss play. Ew. Yeah. Kiss Ew. Play. Yeah. Good times. Okay, that's it. So Toy Fair is cool. I'll talk about more next week. Yeah, you will. I will. <laughs> I will. Okay, let's move into our weeks. Yep. I'll open up because it's very simple. This week, I basically did almost nothing. Yeah, I, yeah, you know what? I mirror you because I was just waiting for Monster Hunter. Same. I will talk about the new 3DS. Yeah. That uh, that I bought. I bought it. It's bad, eh? When you have like something you're waiting for, <laughs> you just like spend the whole week yeah. not doing anything in I anticipation it. that like it'll come faster. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't. Come slower. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So the new 3DS is new. <laughs> Who knew? It says, it's, new, it says on on new on box. it. And it even has the little amiibo markings? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's amiibo compatible. Yeah. Sick ups! <laughs> yeah, now have fun go hunting down amiibos. Yeah, BRB. Dude, you just got a pre order on Amazon. Uh, they were, I think they got the new amiibos at, uh, at EB Games the other day. And this kid, while I was buying Monster Hunter and Majora's Mask, 
this kid just walked out with four Toon Links. Wow. <laughs> He's just like, whatever, these are mine now. <laughs> I'm just going to pre-order Lucina, and then I'm good. Someone, I think someone bought, like, 500 Lucinas. She's not even out. No, when... Oh, not, oh sorry, not Lucina. Oh, that was... You're no, Mark. not Mark. That, who's the Mario Galaxy princess? Rosalina. Rosalina, sorry. Yeah, like someone, uh, when they first went up for pre-orders, someone just straight up <clears throat> pre-ordered 500 wow. Rosalinas so no one else can have them. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> wow. But yeah, no, it's the new 3DS. Uh, it has a C-stick. Stick in quotations. Yeah. It's a nub mark like you'd find on those old... Lenovo's. Um, yeah, those old ThinkPads, the red dot in the middle of the keyboard. Very much identical to that. Uh, feels slightly better in the hand. I don't know. Like, is it roughly the same size as the XL? It is pretty much the same size. It's just not at, like, even though it's rounded, mm -hmm. it's not as rounded. If okay. that makes sense. It's more or less the same. Uh, the 3D works a lot better. Not perfect, but it works a lot better. Yeah, like, you don't have to be there staring at it like that, yeah, one, right? Yeah, which is nice. So I can, like, sort of tilt back and forth or whatnot. I, I found that in low light scenarios, it has a hard time compensating all the time. Mm -hmm. just because I play with my glasses and in low light the camera that's looking at my eye sees the glare off my glasses from oh. the screen and it can't track my eyes at the Wait, best. you play with the 3D? Yeah. What? I love 3D. What? Hurts. I, you guys are crazy. What? You got, it's a feature, man. I you, use it to like check out a cutscene for the first time and then I shut it off. Like, like I love the 3D. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Always playing 3D. Man. Jeez. No wonder you need glasses. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's cool. I... I don't think you need to upgrade if you have an XL. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the old, the original 3DS, what are you waiting for? Get the new one. Better. Just is. Just do it. Just do it. Follow the goddess Nike. Just do it. But yeah, it's nice. Um, but uh, to help, to help pass the time while I was waiting for the Monster Hunter 3DS and stuff, I did build model kits this week, guys. What did you build? I built, oh, I took a, a monumentous task, and I built three. At once? At once. But here's the thing. Why? They're all the same kit. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so I'll show you. They are from the Build Fighter series. They're the Easy SRs. Now, my original concept with this is because they're, like, very monotone in color, I really want to try and paint them so they look like they're dirty robots that you would see in manga. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, where it's, like, all, like, just... Black lines scratched everywhere. Man, these have, like, better build quality than... So, like, I found my old Play Arts Kai's yeah. of uh, Final Fantasy twelve characters. Uh-huh. And those suck. Yeah. So, the guy on your thing asked if you did buy three of them. Did you? I don't know. I have three here. Did I buy three? Yes, I did. <laughs> really? Wow, snark. We get it. That's just so much money. No? No. Aren't they like twenty dollars each? No, oh, these are these are thirteen hundred yen each. Oh wow, get on it! But yeah, no. So I tried. Uh, I did a lot more painting here. I did a lot more weathering. I did some stuff. And you can tell the three kits, but they're they're the same with just different attachment. Attachment, yes. Like when you build it, it's their cores are the same, and then to finish the build, you just add on their separate pieces. What is this thing? It's like a he's got a frisbee on his head. So it's called a radome. It's okay. a radar. Yeah, it's weird. But like, it's Sunrise loves having people like this, right? Yeah. Like, you know Metal Armor Dragonar? So that's what this team is based on. No way. <laughs> you yeah. gotta be kidding me. <laughs> well, think about it. This is the Dragonar team. Oh my god, you're right. Oh my god. Yeah. That's... the Damn it! Yeah. The... How did I not see it right away? <laughs> this is the Dragonar reference. Damn it! Your Kojo <gasps> card has been revoked. Do you know what they are? No. no so the Metal Armor Dragonar team is another show that they had birth from like the 1990s? Yeah, it was actually supposed to be their successor it's to Gundam. Gundam, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's three guys. One of them is... Mi what is it? One of them is the tactician. Yeah. So it's the one with the radar frisbee in his head. Yeah. Okay. His robot literally has that for a face. Yeah. Cool. N no Gundam head. <laughs> uh, the other one has the Gundam with the visor, like like the one you see here, okay. the second one. And he has two cannons on his corner, so he's their artillery. Yeah, he's right. like and then the main range. guy looks like a Gundam. Yeah. Okay. He has red and everything. Yeah. That's the, that's what this menu yeah. is. And in the show, in Build Fighters, even the pilots mimic the pilots from Dragon Arm. Oh my god, no! <laughs> How did I miss that? He's blowing his brain, man. Stop no, because they all have... Kind of the same hairstylish. Yeah, and they have like the sort of same personality and like. Yeah. Oh, I also man. like how the the way you've painted them. They match the microphone and the MacBook. Wow. 
Wow. Gray, silver. Yeah. And black. Yeah, I think he did that on purpose. Oh, that totally what it. So yeah, the last thing I was talking about. Oh yeah, I took apart all these kits and I tried to paint them all at once. Yeah. I yeah, those these ones. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a tough time remembering what parts went back together. Oh, well, he did it. Yeah. So basically, what, everything on the kit that's gunmetal is what I had to paint because it was originally gray. Huh. So I tried to make it so that all the joints. Um, so it looks. So basically, it looks like he's wearing a gunmetal undersuit, and then he has like straps in their backpacks are all gunmetal. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I did this week. Built three Gandams. The next time you should just like, if you want to make them look dirty, just like sprinkle it in mud. Just like actually for real. You know, I bought this thing called, to me, a master weathering set. Okay. <laughs> How much did that cost you? Five bucks. Okay. It's literally just makeup. Oh, wow. Like girls makeup. You know, the, the, the when they open the thing, it's a mirror. Yeah. And there's like the, the powdery but stuff. But they just repackaged it's it. It's literally that. It even comes with the stick to apply. Is that what your tweet about going to Sephora was about? Uh-huh. So did you just go to a Sephora? Yeah, I'm like, because I want to like, let's see what the cheapest makeup is because Sephora has a billion colors I could choose from. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, if it's cheap enough, I'm just going to use this. But no, Sephora's expensive. Yeah, uh, yeah. You should, like, if you actually want to buy something, you should be like, what shade would best fit my <laughs> oh, robot? I should bring right? a Just robot. like bring it, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or like bring the old kit. Like, do you have this color? But. <laughs> yeah, no, because on the manual, they have color guides, and I'm like, so can you just match this color? <laughs> <laughs> you should do that. Yeah. I want to be there for that. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, that's, uh, that's what I did this week. It was fun. I do recommend these kits. Uh, what I will say is, um, of all the Build Fighter kits, this is probably the best one to buy. What? Yeah. Because... Because, okay, you buy one, but you have the parts to build all three. Oh. And even though you'll only end up with one robot, you can always mix and match and change the one you want. Wait, so you have like three... Do you have like two extra domes and like two extra shoulder yeah. rifles? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have two extra guns. Two, I have six beam sabers, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So like, and I get, like, that was always the big uh, issue with this kid. It's like, if it just seems wasteful, but I think it's... A, and or it seems like a questionable business tactic to get you to buy the same toy three times over. But I think it's cool. I think it's cool that you could build out a team like that. I'm kind of just thinking how many giant missile pods you can put on a dude before it looks ridiculous. I don't know. Have you seen Heavy Arms Gundam? He's pretty crazy. Yeah. He's just got missiles everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. And, like, of course I built them the way they look like in the show. But you can just take all their items and jam them onto one body and call it a day yeah so, six beam savers yeah. two rifles do this yeah so you can you can do that if you want but you know that was my week our uh, blade what was your week like so my week i started streaming magic again oh you did and i, I watched did. one or yeah twitch.tv uh, slash what blade slash blade and blade uh so far i'm i was streaming uh regular magic online but i think from now i'm gonna start streaming that and Duels of the Planeswalkers, which is the more casual one. Mm. A lot of people don't like it, but it's the one that looks nicer. And there's a lot of weird, janky cards. So I guess I'm trying to cater to more casual audience. Just because there's a lot of competitive streams out there. And I don't think I'm that good to be competitive. Also, cool. I mean, the number one complaint that I've heard from people is that when they watch competitive... Or when they watch Magic, it's not just really that fun to watch. Mm -hmm. It's just the mean cards and whatnot. Yeah. The thing is that most people who do watch have some sort of competitive interest. That's why they watch. So I have to find, you know, a good, you know, base. I try to be interactive with my chat and I ask people what to what I should build. Like the last time I played, they're like, oh, just get like green, white, maximum dirtle. <laughs> put, any card, put any card that like doesn't do anything. And then we won. <laughs> we won three in a row. Wow. And then the other one, we did blue, black, and like, you know, that's a color of control, but they're like, no instants or sorceries, <laughs> only creatures. That's so I was good. like, oh, that's, that's hard. All right. So, uh, death touch. Death and touch. Flying. And uh, yeah, and flying. <laughs> so I basically, you know, I try to make it interactive. I try to make it so that, you know, I show you guys what you want to see. So that's also yeah. a good way for you to, I guess, maybe see card interactions that you might not have seen. Before, yeah, right? absolutely. Because I'm like, experimenting with ways that you wouldn't have regularly done otherwise. But I mean, like, I mean, there were some sweet moments because, like, I was playing as a computer. I like, go in for the lethal and they fog me and then everybody just goes crazy because <laughs> I just got fogged out of nowhere. And that would never happen during the competitive stream, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to try something different. A lot of people are giving me flack for it, but I don't know. Who knows? He is going to hate, son. Actually, that actually has become... a. Very apparently painful, like painfully apparent. You just gotta shake it off. What? All right. Like, like, just, yeah. Do yeah. you get some too? I get, I get hate email every day. Actually? Yeah. 
Like, what is their problem? I don't well, even do things like this to you guys. And sometimes on my Twitter, I get like, I get like, your opinions are stupid and stuff from people. No. Like, just because like I hashtag something. Yeah. And like, I don't even, I don't even do like a YouTube channel. I don't, I don't stream anything. Yeah, I just like, post out opinions. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this out there. Like, there's a lot of people that like, really, like, s- I feel like they seek to pin you down. You know what I mean? No, it's not that. It's just, it's easy. It's just easy to voice. Not in the voice opinion. It's easy to criticize someone. Yeah, it's crazy. And even though it also affects um, what I was gonna say, sometimes you read it a lot worse than it actually is. I know, yeah. but like it's and that's, like yeah, text is not. Yeah, like that's the one thing I always try to remind is, myself is like there is no, there's no sort of emotion behind text. Like it's just a statement. Um, yeah, because like if they're like, oh, your stream's awful, or like your review is awful, yeah. like what do you, what, how do you take that, right? Like I, I don't like. I leave all my comments up, like, if people want to criticize, they can, and, like, if, if I have nothing to say, then I just don't respond. Yeah, I just, it's just, I just can't believe, like, you probably have to deal with this already. Oh, every morning I wake up to, like, a hundred new emails from YouTube, and it's, like, comments, 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 hate comments, hate comments, hate comments. And there's, like, one dude who's, like, yo, this was sick, and you're, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, like, one guy who does that, and then there's, like, two private messages that be, like, yo, this is what the fuck you're doing, garbage, blah, 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 and it's, like, well. Really? (laughs) Yeah. But like you know, living that YouTube life. Yeah. yeah, but the general consensus is that your reviews are well received, though, right? I think so. It should. Yeah. I mean, if I'm if I'm using the like meter correctly, then yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you, I just, you know? I do find that the internet's a harsh place now. I well, here's the thing: the people like when when you like something on it, generally you don't say anything; you just like it. Yeah. You, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's only people when they have a negative opinion that those are the only people who actually care to write. Yeah, I know. Because like if you. So I, I like that's a couple of years ago. Uh, Patrick Klepek, who, who used to work for Giant Bomb, yeah. kind of brought that up, and like it kind of was like, oh wow, like I actually only I don't voice my opinion when I like something. Yeah, you right? just you just nod your head. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, this is great. And you and move then, on. Yeah. So like yeah. now, I've, like whenever I'm on the internet or like I see something good, I try to comment or leave feed, positive yeah. feedback and stuff. That's not just yeah. you know, this is total trash or something. Yeah. And I'll have to credit you guys. Like Vince helped me out by giving me a, a mo- an extra monitor to use for my stream and then uh you recommend the Yeti, so it's, yeah the setups in my room is cluttered but it good works. good you have <laughs> a very small desk yeah it, it's <laughs> funny because like on camera also the camera adds like 30 pounds eh? like i just look like a fatty so i gotta of lose course. some weight of man. so, so you I, get like a fisheye lens yeah i know right so like but it, it looks like you know it's so much effort for just a little bit of like you know it's just my desktop and my webcam. Yeah. But I need another one monitor to look at stuff. I need another... Yeah, there is a way to do it on the one monitor, but it's so, so easy when yeah. you have two monitors. Yeah, and then, like, I have another, I have my MacBook running so I can listen to my stream in case anything that goes wrong. Because yeah. I don't know what's going on, right? Yeah. 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 And if I listen through it through the computer, the computer will pick it up and it'll do, like, infinite infi- loop. Yeah, I stuff. like that. Like, mirror, like, looking into two mirrors. We're just, like, <laughs> reflecting off each other. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it is hard to get followers and stuff, but hopefully, like, I mean, I've only done it twice. Yeah, I you think know? I think like the only advice I can give is just be consistent. Yeah, that's what I. That is the number one thing I've heard. Just do it because you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, and, and yet, it's your hobby. It's fun, right? It's not your job. Yeah. Uh, any benefits you get from it are just that. Yeah, just that's bonuses. That's what I heard, and like a lot of people are saying that the more consistent you are, like. Just so happened that people will keep seeing you on the channel. And then like, yeah, like uh, when I started, it took me forever to get, you know, to build up like subscriber numbers or views. But because I just kept going and I kept putting out stuff, eventually when you started searching, my name just kept popping up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Like we don't, we don't get ad money for this. Like, no. Yeah. We're running this at a loss for like four years straight. Mm. Not really. Or loss. Vince is running it at a loss for four years straight. Mm. But the thing is, oh, wait, like, do you get like YouTube money enough to like cover the hosting costs, or I get YouTube money enough to yeah, to okay. cover the cost. Yeah. All right. So wait, yeah, we're not running at all. Well, because I lumped it in with my toy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it yeah, just yeah. works. So we're not like we're breaking even, I guess. I don't know. Like I, I could break out the vid like just this podcast yeah, videos, yeah. and I bet the numbers would still be a loss. Yeah. But yeah. Whatever. Like, but, but we just do it because we like it, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. And I, I think I'm going to do it just because I like it. And whatever the haters is, the chat, sometimes they, they can get rough. And I know now why like some streamers are like, they get a little mad at their chat. Yeah, do you, um, do you have like a schedule? 
No, I don't, but I'm thinking about it. I just have to know, like, I mean, my work's all over the place, so... Yeah, see, that's the problem, yeah. Yeah, but, like, at the same time, I do try to stream as often as I can, and now I'm trying to, like, tell people when I'm going on live the day before or something, like, if I'm planning to be at home and do Yeah, it. like, if you if you can get, like, a regular schedule going, it's always a lot easier to get people to know when... Yeah, you the thing is... Media yeah, and again, the, the biggest thing is, like, you're right, only the haters talk, right? Yeah. And it's, uh... I, I can see now why, like, some streamers, they have a tough time with Yeah, some people, they, they, can't, they can't take it, and they just, that's what, they, they stop early because of that. Yeah, but that too, and, like, they have to block people and stuff, and, yeah. like, I have been around people who, like, they're just like, oh, let's troll this guy, or, like, let's, like, totally, like, bash oh, him. Oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. But, it's like, to me, it's like, but why, though? Like, this person's out there doing this, taking their time to do this for you. Like, what? Yeah. Oh, sorry, that is mine. It's like, why, why are you going to do this? Like, that was me, that was me in, like, 16 to... 20 like it's just where i'm just like like it wasn't like i wasn't spouting hateful comments but i was i was trolling people yeah right and like now that i'm older i'm just like i really didn't do anything and like in retrospect it wasn't even that funny yeah, yeah. so yeah no it's been a lot of fun and i definitely want to do it more i want to get more people on like you know just to play uh yeah. like alongside me and stuff and it'll be more fun that way yo man just start giving out free rp Oh, RP God. giveaways. RP Sign giveaways. Even though you're playing Magic. Yeah, I love how they... I want to know how like how people get the thing like, at the top of the counter and stuff. I, uh, I want to get to that. Yeah, those are layouts. Yeah. You can program... Or you can like make or program your own layouts for like XSplit and stuff. So what do those do? Uh, so like they'll have... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Not not the mechanics, but like what do they advertise there? Oh, like so if they're sponsored by something, oh, they'll have okay. like a rotating picture in the bottom where it okay. rotates. Or if they have... Uh, or if they're popular enough to get subscribers or followers... Or anybody can get followers, but subscribers. They'll have like almost like a CNN news ticker at the top of people who. Wait, they have like a hit counter? Yeah, almost. And so people who have subscribed, it'll be like new subscriber, and it like crawls across the screen and it has yeah, the amount yeah. they subscribed or donated. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's all like programming stuff that links with like, like PayPal or PayPal or other databases and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, you can get pretty deep on that. Cool. A neat. Two. Is that it for your week? Is that yeah? That's been my week. Chilling? So, anything? What yeah. kind of creative tasks have you been implementing? Creative tasks. Been streaming too. Do you have a secret YouTube channel that I don't know about? <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I don't post anything to it anymore. Okay. Like I used to just I used to be part of like a Street Fighter community, so I would just take oh. tape our matches and then post them up so that we can rewatch them and stuff. You're dating yourself, son. Huh? You're dating yourself. I know, right? Street I would Fighter tape my matches Sorry. well because i didn't have a, like a direct feed setup so i had like a video camera i would take a like i had like a nightstand or like a side table yeah and i would stack it with manga until the camera could like fill the tv and then i would video i would videotape the tv <laughs> you videotape yeah all right well, i had a digital video camera but it videotaped the tv uh-huh yeah uh so during my week i a lot of games i did if i can find it where to go I don't know. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah. So, I've been, like, slowly, slowly. This is, like, my year, two-year-long run of playing through Spec Ops The Line. Wow. Yeah. I still haven't finished it. Oh, my uh, God. The game's, like, eight hours. I know. And I still haven't finished it. Uh, I'm starting to get, like... Like, so everybody's hyped up this story of, like, it's this heart of darkness. It's the true tale of war. It is. It's this dark, deep thing. And I'm starting to get to this point where... Where villains aren't uh, like evil in a sense, where I'm like, oh, how 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 terrible that they would do this, like so inhumane. Yeah. They're terrible to the point of like cheesy comic book villains. It's like like this guy in his spare time like murders children and like rapes corpses and like he's just this terrible, terrible thing. But he's like he's so bad he's leaped over into comical wow. to where it's like I just don't believe it anymore. Uh, and everybody is like that. Like you hear enemy banter where they're like, "Oh, I just signed up to kill civilians and stuff." And they're just like these caricatures of them. <laughs> yeah, there's like these caricatures of themselves almost. And it kind of takes away from the seriousness of the topic at hand, which is civilian casualties in a war zone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, there are some. There are some pretty uh, rough moments. I got to the. There's a moment in the game where everybody says it was like this kind of like, "Oh crap!" Like this video game might have gone too far kind of moment. Yeah. Uh, but when you put it, but for me at least, when you put it beside all the other terrible acts of war crimes and Geneva Convention breaking actions you're doing, uh, 
it kind of blended in with everything, and I didn't realize that it was that moment until after the fact. Uh, and it's almost like the game is jading me on violence, unless that's <laughs> unless that's like a, like a critique in and of itself about video games. It's desensitizing. Yeah, it's like desensitizing me as I play through it. Wow. Right. I think and, that's all of us now. Yeah. That's just the world yeah. now, actually. Uh, and that's just, and the re uh, the other thing is that like the game's not that fun to play. <laughs> it's a uh, it's very like PS2 era, like yeah. almost like Kill Switch style cover shooter. Okay. Where before Gears of War came and refined it, like they're just like here's a cover, you are killing at least two armies, two battalions worth of dudes every encounter. Yeah. And it's like I just want to get through this story. Like I'm tired. Yeah. I've killed literally the country's population worth of people. Are you playing on easy? Yeah, I'm playing on the easiest mode, wow. and it's super cheesy. Wow. Like, I just want to get through it. Uh, so, like, I don't know. I'll finish it next year, probably. Well. Uh, I got back into Diablo 3. Well, oh, Season 2. Yeah, so Season 2 started yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they've added There's seasons for this game? Yeah, so they actually, they added seasons now. Season 1 ended. Uh, you got a bunch of bonus stuff if you got to level 7 or 6. Mm -hmm. Whatever the cap is. I think it's 70? I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you get to the cap, you get a bunch of stuff, and they have season-exclusive items. So now, Season 2, uh, all your Season 1 stuff rolled over into normal character territory. So if you had any season-exclusive items that you got from Season 1, yeah. you have those, and those are the only way to get those items. Uh, okay. you, you can never get them again, pretty much. At least to my knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so now in Season 2, they not, not only added season-exclusive items or uh, weapons, but they've also added season-exclusive gems... So I, I've mentioned before how there's gems that do like special stuff, but they have a couple that are really cool that, that kind of encourage season play, where uh, every time you kill a monster, you get plus X to experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you level this gem up to level 25, which unlocks the secondary ability, the ability is that it sets the level cap for this gem at one, level one. Mm. So if you want to restart new season characters, yeah, you can easily start to start mowing through and leveling up like crazy fast yeah. to get to that late game content because they know you've played it already uh -huh. and they're giving a lot of incentives to play the season and it's actually really gotten got me back into diablo kind of in the way that diablo 2 did cool. Where, how diablo 2 had its hooks in me at that time cool yeah and it's it's really fun it's just like sometimes i just don't want to play like a console game or i just don't want to play final fantasy so i'm just i'll do a couple runs that takes like 30 minutes and it's just kind of like a palate cleanser almost. Yeah. And you feel and the, the reward the play playtime reward structure is enough to where you always feel like you're making progress even like a little bit of a short time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really fun. And then the last thing I did is I watched a movie called The Brothers Bloom. Uh, this is a movie with Adrian Brody and Mark Ruffalo. Uh, where they are the brothers bloom. They're two brothers. Uh, and from a young age they are con artists. So as they got older, they upped their cons from getting ice cream and candy okay. to conning millionaires and like these very elaborate schemes. And uh, it's it's very uh, like I almost want to equate it to like a Wes Anderson type movie, right. but it's not directed by Wes Anderson. Uh, and it's it's a comedy caper. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was like, this sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's Adrian Brody, uh, Rachel Weisz. And, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. And Mark this is. Ruffalo, and also yeah. Rinko Kikuchi. Yeah. From Pacific Rim, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. plays a character, uh, character who rarely talks, called Bang Bang, and she's just like this mysterious. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> she's like this mysterious, like jack of all trades character, where like when something needs to get done, like she can do it. <laughs> And, like, she'll just appear conveniently, and they, they, they're very self-aware of that. Yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. So, Adrian Brody and Mark Ruffalo, they've been conning people for their whole lives, and Adrian Brody wants out of the game. Uh, he wants... He, this story. Yeah, yeah. He, he wants to find love. So, <laughs> his Mark Ruffalo pulls him in for one last con to con Rachel Weiss's character, uh, who is this eccentric millionaire who pretty much collects hobbies. She so, collects hobbies. Yeah. So what she what she does is that like she doesn't she didn't have to work. She got like a trust fund, I think, and she's just like this insanely rich. Uh, like they show that by uh, she's very bad at driving, and she drives uh, like a yellow Lamborghini. So every time she crashes her car, which is multiple times throughout the movie, yeah. Instead of repairing it, she just buys a new one. I would do yeah. the same thing. So she's just insanely rich. Yeah. So her whole thing was that when she sees someone doing something that she likes. She just dives straight into it and learns how to do it. 
Wow. Right? And so they're trying to con this, because they think she's, like, a naive, like, pent-up-in-a-house type of girl. Yeah. Uh, but then it turns out, obviously, that Adrian Brody's character actually falls in love with her. Uh, but the interesting thing about this movie is that you kind of never know where one con ends and one con begins. And uh, certain story twists happen within the movie where you're never sure if it's a con or not. Mm. And if the... They're, if they have, like, not fed... The movie has not fed you the right type of information for you to know and stuff like that. And it's a really interesting watch because throughout the whole movie, it keeps you on your toes. You feel like you're being conned yeah, as I, they're conning you? Yeah, like, so there's, like... like has someone, like, double-crossed or triple-crossed another character? Yeah. Is the movie kind of conning me into thinking that this is happening? Yeah. And they really play the whole con... That sounds good. Yeah, they really play this whole con aspect into almost, like, a, a meta sense. Hmm. And it's... it's Yeah, it's, it's a very charming movie. It's very... Uh, there's a lot of little uh, quirks in it to where I can see if you watch this movie over and over again, you will see little, like, details that you didn't see before that kind of actually shed more light on the movie. Sounds good. Uh, kind of in the same way for me when I... when I, I love the movie Donnie Darko. Oh, okay. Uh, and with that movie, like, when you watch that movie multiple times, there are certain things in the background and in the way that it's directed where they gave you the answer for, like, the end of the movie or, like, certain scenes in this movie, but you just didn't pay attention. You didn't understand the significance of yeah. these things. Uh, but it's actually it's a highly recommended watch I'm surprised I haven't seen this earlier uh, just for how much of like my kind of movie it is <laughs> uh, I really liked it yeah. it's good to hear I did, you said you saw it or no 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 wanted I, to see I it? wanted to see it mm-hmm. yeah so it, it's a high high praise for me like cool not in the sense of like a Fast and the Furious sense to where yeah man watch Fast and the Furious because this is totally dumb okay. like this is legitimately like a great film okay yeah. Uh, and that, those have been the new things in my week. Everything else has been pretty, uh, like, reading manga. Cool. Still going through Sam Dunk and hmm. doing all that stuff. Well, that sounds awesome. I think that's everybody then, right? Yep. Unless TJ, do you want to tell us about your week? Nope. No? All no. right. That was a no. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. TJ's already playing Monster Hunter in the background. <laughs> Yo, he's like G-rank already. We're going to yeah, get smoked. He, he's just waiting for us to finish this up so that we can all hook up. So with that, we should end the show. Uh, look forward to next week as we talk about the same damn shit all over again. Yeah, yeah. Video games, magic streaming, and toys. This is why we're so, we're so well-rounded. Yeah, we are. Uh, also, next week, look forward to our review of Kingsman, as that is oh, now yeah. out. Oh, I want to see that movie. Yeah, me too. So you guys can look forward to that. Um, anything else? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, play Monster Hunter with us. Volume 3 of Monster came out. Yeah. Go buy that. Okay, thanks. that series is good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks for listening. Um, you know where to find us. Google.com. Three Nerds in the Basement. Uh, TNIB.letters at gmail.com is the place to write in for any reason whatsoever. You can watch us on YouTube. Want to write us hate mail? Go for it. We'll ignore it. Or read it. Or read it. Hmm. We'll publicly shame you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.